How well do you know your aircraft? This video is the story about a flight crew that experienced a cascade of technical failures during approach. And thanks to the captain's foresight and understanding of the aircraft's electrical system, he found a solution that allowed them to land safely. And at the end of the video, I will give you a great tip. Stay tuned. Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magnar Nordahl, I'm an ATA captain and instructor. Sometimes I hear pilots say they do not have to understand the aircraft systems in detail, because when something goes wrong, they just follow the checklist. Yes, we pilots do not need to know the aircraft system in detail. We can leave that to the engineers. But a sound understanding of the systems is always an advantage. The most complex situations happen when we have electrical failures. The electrical system consists of several power sources like generators, inverters, transformers and batteries, and many bus bars. And they in turn are connected with switches and contactors. A system can be powered by one electrical source, controlled by a computer powered by a second electrical source, and monitored by a computer powered by a third electrical source. Here is one example. In ATA aircraft, the green hydraulic pump is powered by AC wall bus number 2, controlled by DC essential bus and monitored by DC emergency bus. While you do not have to remember which bus is controlling or monitoring what, it is nice to understand that a failure to one part of the electrical system might influence other systems in a way that do not always look obvious. So in the DC essential bus, for example, has failed the checklist tells you to select a hydraulic green pump off and a hydraulic crossfit on. This becomes even more complex when more than one bus has failed. And this is exactly what happened to Emerald Airlines Flight 3671. This incident happened in 2022. At that time, ATA aircraft with glass cockpit, that means the 600 versions, were required to fly the TRU permanently on. The TRU is designed to provide backup power to the electrical buses that otherwise would be powered by the batteries, in case both DC generators have failed. But in 2020, there were two incidents where all display units were lost in flight. The culprit was tracked to the battery switch and a contactor. While waiting for those components to be redesigned, tested, produced and installed, the operators were required to use the TRU in all flight. I have made a video about this, and you'll find a link in the description below here. In the morning of the 19th September 2022, an ATS MT2 600 operated by Emerald Airlines on behalf of Aero Lingus Regional departed Belfast City Airport for a flight to Leeds Bradford Airport. During this send, a master caution message appeared very briefly with no associated indications. The captain, who was pilot monitoring, believed it was electrical standby under voltage. He opened a quick reference handbook and reviewed the procedure. The DC standby bus is very important because it powers systems used to fly an instrument approach and to control the flaps and the landing gear. The checklist tells you to select the TRU on. If the under voltage message disappears, you leave the TRU on. If the failure persists, Select the TRU off. Remember that. The rest of the flight was uneventful, but just after touchdown, the same master caution message illuminated briefly, long enough to confirm the captain had identified it correctly. After shutting down the engines, the captain called the company's engineer, who suggested to power the aircraft down to reset the aircraft systems. Usually, this solves the problems. After further discussion, the captain and the engineer agreed the crew would operate the aircraft back to Belfast, where the company engineers could investigate the issue further. I think it was a sound decision, because the indications had been transient, and there were no technical supporting leads. After departure, during climb, the same as the caution message occurred for a few seconds. The captain, who was pilot flying, asks the first officer to monitor the electrical system page on the MFT. This was a good decision. The rest of the flight was uneventful until they descended through flight level A2, or 8200 feet pressure altitude. The master warning was triggered, 
and the autopilot and your dump load is engaged. The flight director bars disappeared, the selected altitude reduced to zero, and the heading bird jumped 180 degrees from its original position. Both pilots recall some electrical burst bars turning amber on the electrical system page. They reported I believe the alert messages included DC standby bus and the voltage. However, the captain did not see the under voltage light on the standby bus push button. Because that light is powered by the DC emergency bus, which had been lost together with the DC standby bus. Loss of the emergency bus also resulted in loss of the propeller interface unit, which caused propeller RPM to increase to 100%, and loss of normal pitch trim. VHF1, transponder number 1, hydraulic blue pump control, nozzle steering, and brake anti-skid. The crew also received a warning that the landing gear was not down. The captain recalled using the speed box, and his navigation display switched from arc to rose mode and increased the range, I guess up to 80 nautical miles because this is the default mode at power up. Air data computer number 2 was lost, resulting in loss of the first officer's airspeed indicator, altimeter and vertical speed indicator. Loss of this uh, standby bus resulted in loss of flap control, landing gear control, VR ILS number 1 and GPS number 1. The indications on the engine warning display appeared to be frozen, and I could not use the electronic checklist. As you can understand, the stress level in the cockpit increased rapidly. By cross-checking with the standby instruments, the captain confirmed the remaining information on his primary flight display was reliable. The captain instructed the first officer to transmit a pan, -pan call to ATC, so they got priority. VHF-1 radio was dead, so the first officer had to use VHF radio number 2. Transponder number 1 was also dead, so they had to swap to number 2 as well. Air traffic control cleared them to 2,000 feet for ILS approach on I-22. The flight crew started analyzing the situation and troubleshooting. The captain also called a CNU cabin crew member to the cockpit for a NITS briefing. NITS means nature emergency, intentions, time, and special instructions. While on a heading to intercept the ILS localizer, the crew discovered they had no indications from the ILS but they were visual with the airport, so they requested a visual approach. At about 8 nautical miles from the airport, they selected flaps 15 and gear down, but neither deployed, because they are controlled by the DC standby bus. And do you remember the checklist for standby bus and the voltage? Apparently the captain did, and he instructed the first officer to select the TRU off. Immediately all systems return back to normal. The flaps and the landing gear deployed, and when they were descending through 1,000 feet, the aircraft was fully stabilized, clear to land. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to fly the aircraft when the going gets tough. The mantra is to aviate, navigate and communicate, in that order. And this crew did just that. And since the captain had read the procedure for standby bus under voltage, he understood the TRU could be a part of the problem. This is troubleshooting at the best. Well done. The culprit was a contactor named PA95. It supplies electrical power from the TRU to the DC standby bus and DC emergency bus. It was determined that the contact plate inside the contactor was slightly off the limits. This error could have happened during production. The result was that the conductor could no longer make proper contact, and power to the affected buses was lost. The combination of two malfunctioning buses and their associated systems is something we normally don't train for in the simulator. There are just too many combinations. We have 17 buses. Therefore, some knowledge about the electrical system can help a lot. At the beginning of this video, I promised to share a tip with you, and here it is. This is a list of some systems powered by the most prominent DC buses in the ATR. They are easy to identify, or they require special attention from the flight crew. A complete list is found in FCOM description, chapter 24, 6. 
electrical power distribution equipment list. And the procedures are found in the quick reference handbook. Decibus 1, display units on and 3, that's for the glass cockpit. Automatic pressurization via the radar. Decibus 2, display unit 5, also for the 600. And almost everything with a number 2 label, MCDU2, DME2, Transponder2, BUR ILS2, GPS2, Air Data Computer2, affecting first officer speed and altitude, VHF radio number 2, plus auto function of TLU and hydraulic ox pump. This essential bus, air condition pack 1 and 2, so now we have to descend. Audio system, all calls PA, they are lost. This emergency bus, Autopilot, VHF1, Transponder1, normal trims, but we have the standby pitch trim. This is standby bus, Autopilot, Flaps Control, Landing Gear Control, we are ILS1, GPS1, MCDU1. When it comes to ATA variants with EFIS cockpit, we have a nice rule of thumb to identify the failed buses. DC bus 1. You have lost engine 1 oil and fuel indication. DC bus 2. You have lost engine 2 oil and fuel indication. DC essential bus. You have lost NP, ITT and NHNL indication. And DC emergency bus. You have lost torque indication. That's really easy. Okay, what is the conclusion of this story? Because of a failed contactor, the crew of Emerald Airways Flight 3671 faced two bus failures that together were not covered by any checklist. Thanks to the captain's foresight by checking the procedure in the quick reference handbook earlier that day, he had a mental picture that helped him finding the correct solution. Knowing your aircraft gives you an advantage when something goes wrong, especially when you lose electrical buses as they do not only power some of the aircraft systems, but they also control and monitor other systems. So if the autopilot suddenly disengages, indications disappear, and you see alerts all around you, don't panic. Fly the aircraft, analyze, identify, then you can act. Remember, multiple failures are associated with electrical bus failures. So then you figure out which bus has failed, and the red panel may give a clue. The electrical system page is even better. And the failed systems will confirm the bus failure. Maybe one more bus has failed? Well, then it becomes more interesting, as the crew of Emerald Airlines discovered. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy landing.